And in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this lock that actually works. You'll be able to use the key to open it up and lock it back up. Starting with the back here, just filling in the shape, just one layer. And I'm going back and forth making stripes, but you could really use any technique that you wanted as long as it turns out nice and flat and gives you a good spot to work on. And a nice way so that the pieces don't get snagged on any little bumps. And I just also want to note that you might see some little notes on this pattern that say how many layers to make it. Just ignore those. This was a rough draft version of the pattern. All of the shapes and the parts and pieces are exactly the same, but some of the notes off to the side probably won't be correct. So don't actually make the back of this five or six layers thick. I'm just making it one layer thick, and that will work great in the end. And once I get this done, I'm moving over to the the inner case and this is where the thickness of the lock is going to come from and it's going to hold all of the levers and the pieces and the shackle in place but it's also got to be big enough that they can move around inside the lock and then they aren't going to be just pinned tightly so that they can't move freely in order to let the lock open and shut i'm just building up those those edges just line by line and then I also just kind of make sure that I don't have any bits of filament that are too high that will stick up higher than the rest because the you do want the top case to be able to sit pretty flat on top of this in order to attach it and then I'm just moving on to the spring and lever and this is what is going to hold the shackle in place when the lock is locked and so the spring will push that against the shackle so that it will stay in place and it's important for the part of that that is going to engage with the shackle to be pretty precise so that it doesn't snag on it and then I just did two layers for that spring so that it would be nice and firm and I'm making the pivot point for that little lever to sit on I add the inner case and right here you're seeing that I had just noticed that I had some little pieces of plastic sticking out and those would definitely snag on my shackle as it's trying to glide through those openings. So I just had to clip a few things off. You could also use a little sandpaper if you notice that you have plastic that's out of place that needs to be a little more precise. You can, you can fix it using those methods. And I'm just attaching this down to the back of the lock just going around all the edges and this inside edge right there is pretty important that it's secure because the spring is going to push off of that so it needs to be tacked down just on that one side right there where you saw me and I'm just going around the whole outside edge in the end I do like to go over top of this with the same color that I make the front of the lock and so I'm not trying too hard to make it look pretty or anything so it's all going to be covered up anyway and I'm just putting that spring right in there and I'm going to tack it to the side of that wall right there and the the rest of that lever it you can see that it's struggling to stay on that pivot point but once we put the the case over the top of the lock it will just hold it down and you won't need to worry I decided that I needed to make that clasp right there just a little bit thicker so that it would hold onto the shackle a little bit more efficiently and now I'm going to make the front cover and I'm just going to make that nice and flat and I'm just going to use a a random design because I think that it's pretty just as long as it turns out pretty flat and nice you can you could just do straight stripes like I did on the back it's all according to your personal preference Now that I'm finishing that up, I'm going to move over to the shackle. And before I make that loop there, I'm just making sure that my hand can move freely and will be able to go along the length of that whole thing without having to stop and adjust my wrist or my arm. Because every time you stop, you're going to end up with a little bit of a bubble of filament that might cause you some problems later that you might 
have to sand off in order to get that shackle to move freely through the gaps. And I'm just kind of shaping that while the filament was still warm so that it would engage with the lever and be able to actually stay put when it is locked. And I'm just making the key while I have that color that I wanted loaded on to the 3D pen. My first shackle was not successful. It had too many bumps. So I, was, I needed to remake the shackle so that it could actually flow through those two holes in the top. And now I'm just adding the top cover by holding it in place and then I'm covering up the edges. I just kind of make it look a little more uniform and a little prettier. And then once, once this is all covered up, the lock will actually be finished and we'll be able to put the key in the hole and open it up. This lock only has one spring that holds the lever in place to engage the lock mechanism, but sometimes locks will have many springs or more than one spring that will, once you open the lock, it could, the spring will open up the shackle for you and it will just pop right open. Or sometimes they'll have more mechanisms inside that make it a little bit trickier to pick the lock open. Uh, mine only has one spring and one little mechanism to keep it closed, so it's not a very secure lock, but it's a fun little project, and I hope that you enjoy making it, and, and good luck with your lock project.